Hi guys, we're going to go ahead and read our next section in George versus George. Um, I will warn you, I might have to stop in the middle. It's getting close to time for Benjamin to eat. So we might have to stop and restart on another video. Okay, so let's go ahead. We are going to start on page 28, which this one is called The Shot Heard Around the World. British General Thomas Gage had been trying hard to keep the peace in Massachusetts, but he ordered in the name but he was ordered in the name of the king to use more force. In April 1775, a spy in Boston warned Gage that the colonial troublemakers were stashing big piles of ammunition in nearby Concord. This was bad news. A bloody war could break out. Gage decided that British, uh, the British Army better go seize John Hancock and Sam, Sam Adams, two rebel leaders who were hiding out in Lexington. Then they should burn the weapons in Concord before people started getting themselves killed. Gage quickly planned a secret raid. A British regiment shivered through a chilly night rowing and then wading across the Charles River, on the morning of April 19th, the soldiers had marched as far as Lexington when they came across about 70 Patriot militia gathered on the village green. The rebels were armed because rebel spies William Dawes and Paul Revere had spread the, had spread the alarm that the British were on their way. Then it shows you right over here in this little picture in the middle. It says John Pickering, who was a British major, says, Lay down your arms, you rebels or you are all dead men. Down at the bottom, we have everyone's nerves were on edge. Still holding their weapons, the Patriots began to back away and look for cover. Then someone fired a shot. Nobody knows who, but as soon as, it, as, soon as they heard it, the British soldiers started shooting. Eight Americans were killed and 10 more were wounded. Not everyone realized it at the time, but the Revolutionary War had just begun. John Hancock and Sam, Sam Adams had disappeared. The Redcoats marched on to Concord and destroyed the ammun to destroy the ammunition, but most of the ammunition had vanished too. Meanwhile, great multitudes of men from farms and villages all over the countryside gathered to fight back. And over here, this page just had, mostly has a picture, so I'll read through what that what that says. So this is over in Concord. Major Buttrick, who is a Concord militia, says, Fire, fellow soldiers, for God's sakes, fire. Then down at the bottom, they have Dr. Joseph Warren, who was a leading Massachusetts statement, says, These fellows say, We won't fight by heavens. I shall die up to my knees in blood. Then down at the bottom, you have George Washington, who says, A brother's sword has been sheathed into a brother's breast. The once happy and peaceful plains of America are neither to be drenched with blood or inhabited by slaves. So we are going to go ahead over onto the next page, page 30 and 31. At the top of page 30, each side told a different tale about Lexington and Concord. Rebel newspapers reported that bloodthirsty redcoats burned houses, drove naked women into the streets, and butchered old men and infants. The king was told that the rebel savages broke the rules of war by ambushing his army. Then they scalloped fallen British infantry and cut off their ears. George Washington was already famous for his fearless leadership when he had fought alongside the British 20 years ago. On June 15, 1775, the Second Continental Congress gathered in Philadelphia and unanimous, unanimous, unanimously elected the 43-year-old Virginian to become the commander-in-chief of their newly formed Continental Army. But how could a small, poorly trained army with almost no money defeat one of the world's most awesome military powers? Washington refused to accept any salary, asking only that Congress pay his expenses. Then down here, in the middle, you have George Washington say, I do not think myself equal to the command. Down at the bottom. The very next morning, long before Washington took command of his troops, the Redcoats back in Massachusetts awoke to discover an amazing sight. In one night, about 1,200 rebels had secretly built a massive fort atop Breed's Hill by Charleston. 
Both sides had fought fiercely until the rebels ran out of powder and ammunition. The rebels ended up losing the hill, but the British lost 92 officers, more than half their men, and more than twice as many soldiers as the rebels lost. Then it says down at the bottom, some say that rebels' original plan was to occupy Bunker's Hill, which was higher and easier to defend. This fight became known as the Battle of Bunker Hill. Then over here, they have... The rebels, says Breed's Hill, Israel Putnam, who is a rebel officer, says, don't fire until you see the whites of their eyes. Then down here at the bottom, you have William Howe, a British major general, says, from an absurd carelessness or ignorance, we have lost a thousand of our best men and officers. Then you have Henry Clinton, who is a British major general, says, a dear bought, foul, a dear bought victory, another such would have returned have ruined us. Then Thomas Gage, who is a British general, says these people show a spirit as great as ever were possessed of and you must proceed in an earnest or give the business up. Okay and I for right now I'm going to go ahead and pause here and I will finish up the rest of our section just here in a little bit. Okay bye.